Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about slope angle. One of the great things about backcountry skiing on cross-country skis is when you come across a meadow like this right over here. It's not super steep, but it sure can offer a lot of fun. And if you're on cross-country gear, it can also be challenging. These slopes are hidden gems because they will never end up on an AT skier's bucket list. Now there are lots of very talented skiers and tons of YouTube videos of people skiing cliff faces and very steep terrain. Don't let yourself get caught up into thinking that somehow we should be able to duplicate that experience on cross-country skis or that somehow backcountry skiing on cross-country skis is somehow inferior. If you get that vibe from one of your friends, I suggest that you hang out with better friends. So let's drop the whole idea of slope angle as a measure of skill level. It is a can of worms. A five degree slope on sheer ice and tight trees can be very difficult in comparison to a 25 degree slope in deep soft powder. So why should anyone be concerned with slope angle? The main reason is for avalanche safety. Most avalanches occur on slopes over 30 degrees. Now that number is the angle of the slope in degrees, not the grade in percent. A 30 degree slope is the same as a 57.7% grade. Slopes less than 30 degrees are generally safe. So how can you know if the terrain that you're skiing is above or less than 30 degrees? If you want to use your calibrated eyeball and you're familiar with downhill skiing at resorts, green runs are typically less than 14 degrees, blue runs are usually less than 22 degrees, and you have to be skiing black diamond runs in order to start getting something in the range of 30 degrees. If you want an accurate measurement, then you'll need to carry a slope meter. They're not very expensive and are really easy to use. If you're curious about the slopes that you're skiing, you know, you can get an app for your cell phone and you can use your phone as a, as a level gauge. I have one, it's called a Bubble Level. I'm not sponsored by them, of course. It's, it's a cheap app, it's less than two bucks. And you can get the angle of the slope quite easily. You know, with experience and over time, you can get a pretty good feel for what the slope is. One of the things that might surprise you, maybe it doesn't, is that people tend to overestimate the degree of the slope that they're skiing. When you're at the top of a hill and looking down a slope, it always looks steeper than it probably really is. Now, when you're in the backcountry on your cross-country skis, going downhill can be a lot of fun. But uh, it can also be very challenging. And uh, it's, it's much more difficult to ski steep slopes on cross-country skis than it is with an alpine setup. But that's the best part about it, is because you can get out and you can ski some gentle slopes with the cross-country skis. It can be very challenging, and yet it can be very safe. Now, one thing you need to keep in mind when you're watching YouTube videos with skiing, and you're, especially when you're looking at GoPro footage, it's really hard to judge the angle. Uh, GoPro uses some wide angle aspects and they use all kinds of distortion to capture as much as they can. And, and the end result is, is it really tends to flatten out the view. Um, I'm looking uh, sideways to this slope over here I don't know if you can guess what that slope is right now, but I'll actually do a measurement with bubble level. And uh, I don't know if that lined up for you very well or not, but it's actually a, a 27 degree slope. Maybe we'll ski over to the top of that slope and uh, we'll look down it and we'll show you what, how, how the GoPro flattens that out. Okay, now I'm going to show you what's called the GoPro effect. I'm looking exactly down that slope, and this is from the top. I was standing right over there, and this is the angle right here, looking directly down the slope. Now, this is, it's, it looks rather flat, but it's mainly because of the way GoPro's using this super wide angle distortion. Now this is the same slope shooting the GoPro in what they call their linear mode, but I still think it's pretty much wide angle. It does look a little steeper. When I, I rarely use the linear mode when I'm skiing, when I'm using skiing angles, it's because uh, in order to make good ski videos, you have to be able to get the tips of your skis and the, uh, and the slope as well. You just can't get that with a normal view. Let's ski this 27 degree slope. This is the view from my 360 camera mounted behind my pack. 
This is a south facing slope and I can see lots of sagebrush and other hazards, so I'm going to ski it with caution. I hope you found this video useful, and if so, be sure to give me a thumbs up and leave any comments you might have down below. Next week will be part two of this video series, and I'd like to show you how I use Google Earth for planning purposes. It's a great way to determine what the slope angle is and what the avalanche danger is and areas you might be venturing into. Until next time, be safe, be kind, and by all means, be sure to have fun.